Well then, this project has been over a year in the making. It started off when I became too old for the FLL team. I intended to become a member of the Digidivision, to help Delta further the bounds of our... technologies. So I set out to make my first, very own, Digibone. I named it... Oko. Oko's main purpose was to detect intruders. How, you might ask? Well, go ask Delta. He designed and provided the sensors used in this project. All I know is that they use some kind of shadow technology, seismic waves, and dark magic. In addition to that, I wanted Oko to be able to take and send pictures, and function as an emergency flashlight. Unfortunately, real life got in the way of this project for a while, and a lot has happened since I last worked on it. The FLL team made it to the World Finals, Delta's Digibone has been massively upgraded, and somehow we've become a music channel? So here's the situation. In terms of hardware, I have many iterations of housing designs, each version with its own set of problems that were then fixed in the next. This led to a final design made up of two halves, these halves are held together by corner pieces. The design is perfect in every way, except that it didn't fit the electronics. So I made a new, larger design. It even already has the electronics built into it now. The first step will be to see if it actually still works, though. In terms of software, I think I'll have to start entirely from scratch. I've lost trust in the libraries I was using, so the first step will be choosing a new one to build off of. Building the software took far too long to document all of it. But to give you an idea of the process, here are some clips, and a spinning cat for reference. Okay. That is an amazing sign. So, quick update. A uh, new uh, example sketch for uh, the Telegram bot that I intend to use just came out, and right now I'm trying to figure out whether or not I can get it to work. Um, and this is very promising. It compiled, and it seems to be running right now. The big reveal will be whether or not slash photo works. So I'll try sending it, and now we see what happens. It should have been received. And now it's writing something. Huh. A known error. Yes! Haha! <laughs> it worked, I think. I mean, it sent a picture, and that's all that I really care about. It's a terrible picture. But perhaps, oh, it sent another one. I guess I accidentally requested two. But with some time, I'm sure that could be fixed, so to speak. It's quite dark in the room that I'm in, and the camera is pretty much faced at a wall with some wires in front of it. But this is extremely promising, and now it's not stopping to send pictures. Um, maybe the bot is on a loop. I'm not exactly sure. I just, oh, and now it's saying it didn't deliver them. Interesting. Well, looks like there's plenty of bugs to be fixed. However, that means I have a working telegram bot now, or at least a working example sketch, and that is huge. So hopefully I'll be able to mess with this example sketch for a little bit and bring back the Aqua project. The hardware was designed around this chip that Delta made for me. He also helped with most of the soldering, but I did do some of that myself. Despite some troubles here and there, most of the process was surprisingly smooth. We did have some problems with the vibration detector, though. It worked a little bit, 
but it wasn't nearly as sensitive as it should have been. In addition to the person-detecting sensors and camera, Aqua has a 2x4 array of RGB LEDs, which are individually controllable, a programming port for software updates, and some I.O. pins for future add-ons. The USB-C port is for charging. The main challenge I faced was getting the ESP32 cam to work in the first place. It has a lot of features, but it turned out to be surprisingly difficult, and required a lot of testing, to get them all working properly together. Last but not least, the housing, which I already showed you, was made on my 3D printer. Digipo! Oh!